and welcome back to part two of my studio tour. If you haven't watched part one already, please take a minute and do so. The link is popping up on the top and I'll also put it down in the description. At the end of part one, we left off here with this dresser and hutch. Next to that is my dyeing area. This is where I dye all of my fabrics. Now it's not a very large area, but it's perfect for me. And when I do classes and I need a larger area, I roll out plastic onto the big table and we do the dyeing there. Along that back wall, there's a table that's covered with the black plastic. And this table consists of one of those folding, a four foot table. I've raised it up using PVC pipes along the edges and I've topped it with a hollow core door. Above the table, I have a piece of pegboard and this is where I store a lot of items that I need to have quick access to such as my face mask, some tape, and a few other items. Down below the table, I store buckets and pails, towels, and other big bulky items that I need when dyeing fabric. To the left of this table, I have a white drawer unit that's actually the lower half of a dining room hutch set. In the top drawer, I store brushes and rubber bands. The middle drawer, I store zippered storage plastic bags and plastic wrap. And in the bottom drawer, I store just some miscellaneous items. On the opposite wall from this dresser, this is the top half of the hutch. And as you can see, the original color was this uh, yucky old brown, but I haven't gotten around to painting this part yet. And here is where I store a lot of the chemicals and the other ingredients that I use when dyeing my fabric. On the table there, I have a few pieces of fabric in the plastic zipper bags waiting for me to rinse them out. This hutch sits on the top of two lateral file drawers. So this makes lateral file drawers number three and four, uh, actually four and five. And it's also topped with a hollow core door. The file drawer to the left contains clamps and ceramic tile and wood pieces that I use to clamp my fabric when I dye it. And the file drawer to the right contains all of my dyes and my discharge products which are used to remove color from the fabric. And here we have a stool that's also a ladder, one of many that I have around the studio. And it sits in front of another file cabinet that holds my containers that I use when mixing the dyes. On top of this file drawer, I have this storage unit from the IKEA kids department. And I use this to store items that I'm not actively working on, but ones that I want to have handy when I get ready to work on them again. At the end of this file drawer, I have a laundry hamper that holds a lot of towels that I use when dyeing. And above that, I have a little stand where I have my planner that helps keep me on track. As you come around to the back side of this, I have another hollow core door that I've used as a partial wall divider to hang a piece of my art. And to the right of that, you can see two sets of old gym lockers. In the gym locker, I store a lot of my threads that are too tall to fit inside my thread drawers, which you'll see later in, in this video. And I also store paints that I use for screen printing. On top of the lockers, just for fun, I have an old headlight from an old, I'm not sure what vehicle, what type of vehicle it is, but it's old. A friend of mine gave it to me and I just thought it would be fun to put up there. Just across from the lockers, on the other side of the door leading to the sewing room, I have my first two IKEA wardrobes. The one on the left behind the large door, that's where I keep my embroidery floss and other threads that I dye. The set of double doors, Behind that, I have my larger pieces of fabrics that I've dyed that are waiting to be made into something. I keep those on hangers because they are large and it's easier for me to see them that way. The cabinet on the right behind that set of double doors, I keep my undyed fabrics. When I purchase fabric, I usually purchase about 20 to 30 yards at a time. When I get it in, I cut it up into smaller pieces and wash it, fold it up and put it in this cabinet so when I am ready to dye, I can just jump right in and get started. That final section on the right holds a lot of paper products. Even though I don't work with a lot of paper, I've ended up with a lot of paper, most of it being from um, packaging from products I've ordered. And I just really hate to throw it away. So I've kept it hoping maybe one day I might actually get into doing something with it. 
Above the wardrobes, on the left, I have two cabinets that I keep my general purpose threads, most of it being left over from my slipcover business. On the right behind a curtain, I keep my camera equipment and my video equipment, my tripods, my lights, and other bulky items that I don't have room for anywhere else. And for the final section of the main room, this is my design wall. It's approximately seven feet by seven feet or seven and a half feet, and it's made of homosote. And I'll have a link down in the description below where you can do some research about homosote. I like using Homo Soap for my design wall because I can pin into it and I know my pins are going to stay exactly where I put them. So here's a large piece of fabric that I did some rusting on and it's up here because I'm really not sure about it. I like it but I'm not 100% sure I like the size. I'm actually thinking about cutting it into maybe three smaller sections. So if you'd like, I would appreciate your opinion on that. Should I keep it large or should I cut it up? Now in front of the wall, I have two small chairs. They're actually Ikea chairs, but I purchased them at a thrift store for $20 each. So that was quite the steal. And I really like these chairs because they're lightweight, they're comfortable, they're lightweight, they're easy to move out of the way when I need full use of the design wall or when I actually want to use it as a photography wall and take photos of some of my work. At the end of the design wall, I have this black column that was part of a four poster bed. It's strictly a decorative piece. I like it, so it's here. And just on the other side of the column, we'll be right back where we started with the gallery wall. And that's the end of the main room. Next, I'd like to show you the sewing room, which is through this doorway here. But before we do, I'd like to tell you a little about this room. When we bought this house, this was a storage room that's actually an underhang from the apartment above. The apartment above used to have an open porch that was one time closed in, and this was the underhang. This room was partially closed in, but it was pretty half-assed. One wall was open brickwork, and the other wall was so half-assed closed in, there was a lot of daylight coming through. And this doorway here was actually a window. When I decided I wanted to use this room as part of my studio, my husband did a better job of closing it in. He took the open brickwork wall and covered the outside with plywood and stuccoed it. And on the inside, we added some foam insulation and plywood. He then took the doorway or the window and using a grinder he cut the cement block and made an opening for a doorway and framed that out for me. So now the room was suitable enough for me to use as part of my studio. Originally I had the dye area back here but then when I stopped doing slip covers I decided to move the sewing area to this back room since I wasn't doing much sewing at that point. So let's go on back into the room and I'll show you around. As you come into the room, directly to the left of the door is my commercial sewing machine, my Juki, that's left over from my slipcover business days. At one point I had about seven machines and my Juki straight stitch is all that I have left besides my commercial serger, which you'll see in a few minutes. Above the Juki I have some rough shelving. As you can see, this is not a polished room. I have the textured cement block, which is a little hard to hang into, but somehow we've managed and so I have my storage going all the way up to the ceiling, trying to take advantage of as much space as I can. Next to the Juki, I have this small little dresser and this little piece on top that I use to store some of my sewing notions. I found this little piece at a thrift store. Not exactly sure what it was used for, but I like it, so I bought it, and it's perfect for storing some of my smaller notions. Along the back wall, I have my Tim Lizzie sit-down mid-arm machine that I just recently put on this frame from the Grace Company. It's called the Q-Zone Hoop Frame, and I purchased it at the Houston Quilt Show in November 2018. Although I just recently set it up, I think I may have to move it because there are some levers at the back of the machine that I can't access. Under the machine, I have these two thread drawers that I picked up at a thrift store that used to hold embroidery floss. And I also have two more just on the other side of this machine, right next to my serger. Just above these thread drawers, I have a discarded dresser drawer that I've attached to a shelf so that I can use all of this available wall space. 
I like to try to use all of my space in my studio without making the space feel cluttered or crowded. And just before the outside door, I have my commercial serger that's also left over from my slipcover business. Above that on the wall, I have some pegboard to keep um, tools handy. And as you can see, I also have shelving on this side going all the way up to the ceiling. And on the other side of the door leading to the outside, I have my domestic machine. It's a FAF 1475 that I brought back in 1991. So it's an old machine, but it's absolutely my most favorite machine. I have it on a small table and next to it I have a dresser and a few other items on top, some bookshelves above that, pegboard on the wall, and again, shelves that go all the way up to the ceiling. Well, that's it for part two of the studio tour. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, please give the video a big thumbs up. And while you're at it, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and ring that bell so you won't miss any new uploads. And I'd love to know, what did you like best about this part of the studio tour? Did you like the dye area the best, the design wall, or the sewing machine? Let me know in the comments down below. I hope to see you back on my channel again sometime soon, but until then, have a beautiful day.